Welcome ladies and gentlemen here today to a post-race analysis video on the channel. I'm Keegan Schneider and before we get started hit that subscribe button for more daily NASCAR content. We're going to go over each individual moment that happened in the race today and boy was there a lot. Talladega Super Speedway uh, tends to produce some of the better uh, races in NASCAR history and I think this one will go down in history for whether it's the right or wrong reasons and we'll get into that here in a second. Um, I was keeping notes throughout the course of the race so I can keep uh, track of everything that went on, especially being there live in person. And to be there live in person, that was my first Talladega race. And I do have to say, it was one of the better races I've seen live in person. It was a crapshoot for the most part with the wreck fest, but being there live in person, I think kind of helped uh, get me through it. If I would have watched it on TV, um, I probably would have not thought that this is one of the better races I could have seen in person, but because I was there for it, uh, and a lot of action to say the least, they were racing pretty much from the drop of the green flag, very few moments where they were single file and strung out, maybe a little bit midway through stage three, uh, maybe for about 10 laps, and that was about it really, uh, as far as the single file action, so they were double file, three wide at least throughout the course of the day, four wide at times in the middle of the pack, but uh, last but not least, we're going to get into this. Denny Hamlin led the field to the green flag earlier today by starting on the pole, and it only took until turn three on lap one to bring out the first caution of the race. It was a spin with Christopher Bell. It took out Tyler Reddick, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Ty Dillon were all involved in the accident. At least got a little bit of damage, but it was Bell and Reddick who got the most of it. Bell, unfortunately, had to exit the race after this accident. Caution number two came out when Ricky Stenhouse got clipped by John Hunter Nemechek through the tri-oval. That knocked Stenhouse out of the race. Corey LaJoy had an issue on the next restart. Uh, that brought out the third caution. He stalled out. He had to go to the garage. He fell 12 laps down and ended up obviously not gaining that back up by the end of the race. So his day was pretty much done as far as the race win went. And then we had the competition yellow. So everything considered there. We had four cautions in the first 25 laps of the race. That was a Talladega record. In the 103 Cup Series races there, they have not had that many cautions uh, in that few of laps at the beginning of the race. Caution number four, for incident at least, was a big accident. It was the first big accident of the race today. Eric Almarola, uh got pretty much clipped. Uh, he said he was running straight, and then all of a sudden he turned right into the wall, and that pretty much was the case. It, the bumpers just didn't align right perfectly at all. He got clipped on the right rear quarter panel, and uh, again, sent Eric Almarola head on into the wall. Uh, one thing I've noticed, and I have noticed even before today, that when you get cars with this, with the Gen 6 era, no matter what package we use, uh, whatever whatever package we use on the super speedways, with this car, with the Gen 6 car in particular, you get a car that's sideways. It doesn't want to flip unless you get a car behind it. Then when the airflow gets taken off, you still have that car pushing, and it just wants to send it up this way. So uh, that was the case that happened there with Almirola. He somehow stayed on the ground, not sure how he did. And then Kyle Busch went spinning uh, in the process of that too. And he had Ryan Blaney behind him uh, getting T-boned the same way Almirola was. We almost had two cars flipping down the back straightaway uh, simultaneously. And luckily with them reducing the speeds down, I think it helped the cars stay on the ground uh, although we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, all right, we'll just get into it now. The speeds, although in the pack they were slower, you could still get runs. I think the fastest lap turn today was over 204 miles an hour. When Chris Buescher was uh, setting back um, midway through stage one, and he got a run up on the field with Logano and Hamlin there uh, to try and get their faster laps of that race. So you had a definite incident there. Uh, to say the least. Uh, so the speeds were down when everybody was running in the pack, but the closing rate speeds that, that we have seen with this package, no matter how they manipulate it, uh, with the taller rear spoilers, 550 horsepower, uh, high downforce, there, it's just, it's unstoppable. <laughs> it's hard to even make one block, let, let alone two, three, four. Uh, we'll get later and later into the race, but we'll get into that in a second here. So uh, that ended stage one with that accident. Chris Busher actually surprised everybody going on to win stage one. It finished under yellow. Uh, that caution came out with about three or four laps to go in the stage, so they obviously couldn't get back green. Uh, so that was the first big one of the day. We had another caution for Kyle Busch, uh, blowing a left front tire and shedding more debris down the racetrack. Uh, Ryan Blaney also cut a tire. He had damaged fender in on the right front. That brought out another caution. And then we get to the bigger one. And before we get to that for a quick second, uh, with the Kyle Busch and Ryan Blaney debris cautions there. Uh, let me just add into the fact, now I'm not sure how 
they were keeping these guys on the five minute clock and what allowed them to I get you meet minimum speed and you can keep going but the whole point of the five minute clock is to keep the damaged cars off the racetrack we saw three or four cautions today uh, that were based off of debris cautions from drivers that got in an accident earlier in the race. Same thing happened with Jimmy Johnson a little bit later. And I just, I, I don't, that's, NASCAR's got a, a five-minute clock is one way to do that, but they have to set it in a certain way that once you hit the five minutes, you can't come back down to pit road again once you meet minimum speed and keep repairing the car more because that just defeats the purpose of it. Uh, because then, yeah, it's like, okay, well, you met minimum speed, so the clock's off. No, because they still have damage to repair because they can't run it properly like that. So if they want to keep the damaged cars off the racetrack with the five-minute clock, they have to, uh, or six-minute clock, whatever it is now, uh, they, they, they have to not broaden the rule as much. They have to be more stern on it, that's for sure. That, it's hard to get into a discussion on the fly here because, again, we've got a lot to go through. But that's my first little complaint on NASCAR. And I've noticed that in other races, but this one in particular probably was the worst-case scenario for that happening. Uh, and then, again, the red flag came out, the first red flag of the race at, at uh, the seventh caution for incident. Uh, so that's not counting the competition yellow, so eighth caution of the day. Up to that point at lap 108 was the sudden accident. Red flag came out at lap 109. I saw my light flash before my eyes because I was sitting on the front stretch. Uh, 19 rows up, but uh, I, I saw Jimmy Johnson get loose, middle of the trial. Well, ended up being he got pushed uh, by Clint Boyer. I guess it wasn't the first time that Boyer tried to give him a push, and Johnson just got squirrely. That time with it being in the center of the trial, well, typically the cars are a little bit lighter at that area of the track. Uh, less degree of banking than what you would have in the corners. So it just didn't align right, plus the Ford bumper and the Chevy bumper probably had a little bit to uh, do with it, maybe perhaps as well, But because it, it's like he hit him pretty squarely, and even Boyer was kind of confused why uh, uh, he was getting so loose every single time he pushed him, but maybe he should have backed off because he knew he was getting loose, but he didn't. Uh, and unfortunately, that turned Jimmy Johnson. Johnson uh, had it saved for a moment, but then overcorrected it after contact with the car that it was inside. Didn't see exactly who it was. So all I saw from my vision, being there, I was sitting uh, right about where the start-finish line is. But actually, where that wreck happened, I was a perfect halfway point between where the wreck started with Johnson getting loose and then coming back up the track and the start-finish line. And uh, as soon as he came back up the track... And Kurt Busch had contact. I saw Johnson get loose, come back up the track, and then I saw Kurt Busch in the air all of a sudden. And I put my hands over my head. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> because I, I I didn't see. I was trying. I was following it. Uh, I unfortunately did not have the camera on at that time. Uh, I was giving it a couple laps. Uh, so we got to the end of the stage to do it, and I didn't pull it out quick enough because that would have been a heck of a shot right there. But anyway, thankfully everybody's all right from the accident. Kurt Busch came back down on all fours. He didn't completely flip. But he was he had to be in the air. He had to be at least 10, 10 feet off the ground. I mean, and not only that, but for the car not to flip at all. Like we've seen accidents like Brendan Gaughan, Clint Boyer before, where they flip, even Matt Crafted in the truck series, and they land back on all four wheels. But this one just didn't even roll over. It just literally stayed and just shot off like an airplane, landed back on all four. Uh, he had cars going under him. Cole Custer was one of which. Uh, major incident, definitely, uh, for Kurt Busch, his day was done after that, obviously, so was Clint Boyer, Daniel Suarez, uh, they, I don't know if they talked about it on the broadcast or not, but I know at least at the track with the MRN broadcast, they didn't talk about how hard Suarez hit the wall on the inside, uh, that was actually the first thing I saw, there was so much smoke after I saw Kurt Busch in the air, I didn't see him come back down because of how much smoke was in the way, uh, but I did see Suarez, which at the time I didn't know who it was because it was, um, uh, there was so much smoke in the way, but I did see a car compact the inside wall head on pretty hard. And it was Daniel Suarez that turned out to be when they were showing the replays. And uh, he hit pretty viciously too. Uh, but they didn't really, uh, at least at the track, cover it as much. But yeah, for sure, that was definitely something I saw there. Uh, so a couple hard hits there for sure. And everybody got out under their own power. So that's obviously good. Uh, Keselowski, Austin Dillon, Jimmy Johnson had di uh, damage from the incident, but they stayed in the race. Uh, as for Clint Boyer, he's put some well below the cutoff line. And for Austin Dillon, the same thing. Dillon uh, ended up falling a couple laps down by the end of the race. I don't think he was on the lead lap. And he was running very, very slow. 
Uh, and that pretty much ended his shot of winning. Same thing with Jimmy Johnson, ended his shot of winning. The only car, really, from that accident was Brad Keselowski that was able to keep going uh, even after the incident. Uh, so uh, good for him. He was in it late until he got in another wreck. So like, I guess uh, that pretty much solves that. They went back to green with a few laps left in the stage. Martin Truex Jr. actually won the stage. He was one of the drivers I told you guys to stay away from in the predictions video. Uh, he was proving me wrong there for the most part until he got in a crash late, so I guess for finishes it didn't uh, necessarily go too well. Um, Jimmy Johnson brought out the debris caution. I kind of mentioned that slightly earlier. Uh, James Davidson ended up spinning off of turn four late in the race. We had, uh, I believe at the time, a little less than 10 laps to go, or right around 10 laps to go. And uh, Bubba Wallace was actually leading for about 10 laps before that. He was trying to help, uh, hang on. Uh, he ended up getting shuffled out of line. He ended up being the first car on the outside. There were three lanes there. He was the first car on the outside. Uh, he got hit from behind from Ryan Priest trying to give him a shot, and that uh, ended up sending Wallace into the wall off of turn two. He lost all the ground, then all of a sudden, James Davidson ended up spinning, uh, going into turn, uh, or coming off of turn four that same lap. So that kind of bailed Bubba Wallace out uh, and actually gave him another shot. He almost got back up there again. Uh, a little bit later with all the cautions that ended up coming out at the end of the race. So uh, that brought out another yellow. Uh, fuel was becoming an issue at that point. We had a lot of drivers uh, pitting under the cautions. That forced us to go to overtime where Joey Logano led the field into overtime. Uh, there was a crash in the tri-oval before the leader at the time, Chase Elliott, got to the white flag, which would force a second overtime. Uh, and that was pretty much the third and final big crash of the night. Uh, not as big as the two big ones before that, but it did take out uh, probably about three or four cars. I don't think any of them actually went to the garage after this accident. Well, no, never mind. Kevin Harvick went to the garage after the accident. Uh, I guess Kyle Busch would have too because that was the next one he was involved in. But all those other guys that were involved at least stayed on the racetrack, but they definitely, their chances of winning the race were done. Uh, Truex, Logano, Reddick, guys like that, uh, which outside of Truex up until that point in the race uh, wasn't involved in an accident earlier on in the day. Uh, Chase Elliott, Matt Benedetto led the field to the second overtime, and we had another accident off of turn number four. Once again, Ryan Priest got in the back of uh, Bubba Wallace, only this time it was Wallace kind of coming down. Uh, there were four wide. I don't think he knew it was four wide, and he also wasn't clear. So he uh, came down because Wallace was hung out to dry at that point. Uh, there was contact between the two, which ended up sending Wallace into the outside wall. Now the earlier incident between those two, uh, which was the James Davidson caution where Wallace ended up getting in the wall about a half a lap before that. Uh, Ryan Priest had a lot of damage and a lot of duct tape to the front of that race car. And Bubba Wallace got in that earlier accident where Kyle Busch and Elmer Roll almost flipped down the back straightaway. Wallace had uh, a little bit of damage to the right rear, so I think the combination of Priest trying to push him and both his front end was severely damaged and the back of Wallace's car was severely damaged. The bumpers didn't line right. And that's probably what led to uh, Wallace uh, shooting into the wall and why the push wasn't uh, successful at all there. But that one was definitely on Wallace, and he apologized for it in his post-race interview. Uh, Chase Elliott came to pit road because uh, they could not make it, or at least they believed they could not make it, on fuel to the end of the race. So very interesting there. I thought for sure he was going to lead the field to the green for the third overtime. And knowing Elliott's success when I'm there in person, I'm like, here we go again. He's going to win again. Uh, if he would have won, that would have been the fourth of the last six races I've seen where Chase Elliott got a win, and he's only got eight career wins in his career, so uh, it just seems like wherever I go, he seems to run well. Darlington, uh, last month, he was leading late also there. It just seems like he runs, he's probably the best driver when I go there in person that he runs well, and it was really awesome being there in person. The fans cheering him on for like the last, pretty much the whole race, but the last 20 laps, him fighting for the win definitely added to the drama and the at-race uh, at action that went on uh, with it. But uh, So he came down to pit road. That gave Matt Benedetto the lead on the what was the final restart of the race, our third overtime. Matt Benedetto led the field to the green and was holding on for about, uh, I'd probably say... All the way through the first lap of the restart, they got to the white flag. He was still in the lead until they went into turn three and things started to go haywire. We had uh, cars trying to go high to pass him, cars trying to go low. So what happened was uh, there was a car to the inside of Matt Benedetto coming off of turn four. 
Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of who it is. I, I saw the replay a couple times. There were a couple cars that looked like it. I didn't know if it was Ryan Priest or William Byron. I'm kind of thinking it was William Byron. I'm really sorry for that, but uh, heat of the moment, uh, there were a couple cars that looked alike, and <laughs> I, I think it was William Byron. But anyway, uh, mainly because I didn't see duct tape on the front of the car, so that's why I think it was Byron. But anyway, uh, De Benedetto went to shut the door. And Denny Hamlin, who was sitting in third place, which would have been in line on the inside below, uh, presumably what I thought was Byron, uh, De Benedetto made the contact with him. Now, they, mind you this, they were halfway up the racetrack. They were not near the double yellow line at the time. But that shot the uh, car to the inside of De Benedetto down the racetrack. He got really loose. So at that point, Hamlin was trying to avoid an accident, which is uh, what my take was and what NASCAR's take was. And that's why he went below the double yellow line. Uh, I agree with that call. Uh, Hamlin ended up coming back up the racetrack. They were three wide through the trioval, and by inches, Denny Hamlin was able to hold off Matt De Benedetto at the start finish line there. So Denny Hamlin gets the win. Uh, it's the first time I've seen Hamlin win live in person. There was definitely controversy at the end of it, but again, my take on it: Hamlin went to avoid the accident. That's what NASCAR saw, and that is why they ended up giving him the checkered flag and letting him keep the checkered flag at the end of the race. Now, what I don't agree with is that Matt De Benedetto got black flag. Because the contact with the Benedetto and the car to the inside came about halfway up the racetrack. Uh, they were literally in the middle of the group. Hamlin was coming on the bottom, but when they made the contact, then uh, the car to his inside got really loose. And I don't even think he, he got to the WL line, but I don't even think that car got below it. So the fact that they black flagged him for forcing a car below the double yellow line is false. Especially because Denny Hamlin actually went below the double yellow line to miss it. And he didn't force Denny Hamlin down. He forced the other car down. Uh, which Hamlin was trying to avoid an accident. And that's why he went below the double yellow line. So I don't think De Benedetto should have gotten black flag. I think he should have finished in second place behind Denny Hamlin. And also Chase Elliott got black flag at the end of that. Which is costly for him because that cost him points. I think he would have finished in the top ten if it wasn't for that. I'm not sure exactly where he would have finished or what exactly happened. They didn't even really cover that. They just stated it at the end of the race. So uh, I don't know if there was a camera on that on the NBC uh, channel during the course of that race. But, yep, that is the controversy. My thoughts on it. And Denny Hamlin got the win. Uh, again, a long recap of the video, but there was a lot that happened today. And I wanted to give you guys my in-track, in-person perspective on the race. Uh, I'll have a highlight video for my vlog coming out. Uh, likely either at the end of the night or early tomorrow morning, so be on the lookout for that. But now let's take a look at how the fantasy team did here today, because boy, we had some ups and downs in this one. So before we take a look at how the fantasy team did, let's quickly run through the finishing results here. Denny Hamlin, of course, won the race after starting on the pole. Uh, one to finish for Joe Gibbs Racing. Eric Jones ended up second. Ty Dillon, great run for Jermaine Racing and uh, a top three position. At the end of the race there, and of course we know that they're shutting down at the end of the year, so going out with a bang. William Byron, fourth. Chase Elliott uh, scores him in fifth here, even though they said he got penalized, so that's a little confusing. But uh, regardless of the fact, we're just going to go based on, off of how this looks. Again, these results are unofficial. Ryan Newman, sixth. Tyler Reddick in seventh. And uh, he was in a couple of accidents today. I don't know how Reddick ended up seventh. John Hunter Nemechek in eighth. Great run for Brendan Poole in ninth. And Ryan Priest runs out the top ten. Also involved in many accidents. But he still got a top ten in this one also. Uh, we had a lot of drivers DNF here in this one. Uh, everybody from Bubba Wallace on back. So 24th on back. Wallace, Blaney, Logano, Kyle Busch, LaJoy, Johnson, Davidson, Custer. Uh, Kurt Busch, Boyer, Suarez, gone. McDowell, Almirola, Stenhouse, and Bell all DNF'd in today's race. So uh, if I'm counting right, 16 drivers failed to finish the race here today. Uh, that is going to do it for that. So now let's take a look at how the fantasy team did. So before we take a look at how the fantasy team did, let's quickly run through the finishing results here. Denny Hamlin, of course, won the race after starting on the pole. Uh, one to finish for Joe Gibbs Racing. Eric Jones ended up second. Ty Dillon, great run for Jermaine Racing in uh, a top three position at the end of the race there. And, of course, we know that they're shutting down at the end of the year, so going out with a bang. William Byron, fourth. Chase Elliott uh, scores him in fifth here, even though they said he got penalized, so that's a little confusing. But uh, regardless of the fact, we're just going to go based on 
off of how this looks. Again, these results are unofficial. Ryan Newman, 6th. Tyler Reddick in 7th. And uh, he was in a couple of accidents today. I don't know how Reddick ended up 7th. John Hunter Nemechek in 8th. Great run for Brendan Poole in ninth, And Ryan Priest rounds out the top 10. Also involved in many accidents. But he still got a top 10 in this one also. Uh, we had a lot of drivers DNF here in this one. Uh, everybody from Bubba Wallace on back. So 24th on back. Wallace, Blaney, Logano, Kyle Busch, LaJoy, Johnson, Davidson, Custer. Uh, Kurt Busch, Boyer, Suarez, gone. McDowell, Almirola, Stenhouse, and Bell all DNF'd in today's race. So uh, if I'm counting right, 16 drivers failed to finish the race here today. Uh, that is going to do it for that. So now let's take a look at how the fantasy team did. 